And now, B-Movie Mania presents Dark Hollywood. With your hosts, Michael Hayes and Paul A. Brooks. Tonight's guest, Hollywood Medium, Josh. To call the hot tip line, dial 419-777-8478. That number once again, 419-7-SQUIRT. Now, from deep within the Windy City, here is Michael Hayes. Thank you there, Crazy Chris Hudson. Thank you for the intro. Thank you for doing this every week and doing... A fine job. A fine, okay job. Hello, listener. Welcome to B-Movie Mania Presents Dark Hollywood. I am your host, Michael Hayes, as always, and I'm here to talk to you about the dark aspects of Hollywood. With me this week, as he is every week, is co-host and Hollywood scrounger of the deep and the dark mysteries Paul A. Brooks. Hello, Paul. And good evening to you, Michael, from Hollywood. Yes, I said Hollywood. It's rather dark here, uh, mostly because it is uh, evening here in Hollywood. But, uh, well, there are some other dark things going on as well, Mike. Dark and dangerous, I assume. That is correct. And, you know, it's interesting, Mike, I've been out here a little over four years now, and uh, I have to tell you, some of the things that I am starting to uncover out here about the film industry and the shady, seedy underground of Los Angeles, it is shocking, it is sometimes difficult to take, sometimes difficult to believe, but I'm excited to be here with you tonight to dive into some of the darker aspects of Hollywood. That is great. Great to hear, Paul. Thank you for doing the hard, dark work that you're doing. On tonight's show, dear listener, we're going to dive deep into the unknown. Or is it? Maybe it's known to some of us, but not the others, and others don't want us to know. That's right, we're going to talk about the 1994 Roland Emmerich film, Stargate, and the secrets that lie within. Before we get into the meaty topic of tonight, though, we're going to have guest Josh, famed B-movie medium out in Hollywood, and he's going to share some of his secrets from the afterlife and beyond. Now, Mike, does Josh uh, have a a last name? No. No, his name is Josh. Just Josh. Josh. He's a medium. That's his name. It's very dark Hollywood, I'd say. Much like the wicked practices of Madonna. Well, I understand uh, why he would not want to reveal his full identity because uh, in his line of work that could get you into some real hot water real quick. Oh yes, the hot Pacific water. But first, friends, we've all been there. You've had a long day, so you go to your bathroom, lean over the sink and splash some refreshing water on your tired face. It feels great, but when you look up into your mirror, what do you see? That's right, a pesky ghoul, ghost, or specter has creeped up behind you, ready to spook. Well, worry no more, friends. Just try the new Frankenflusher from BMM Industries. The next time you lean down and wet your haggard face, just lean a bit further and press the button now installed on your ceramic throne of shame. You'll hear a pleasant chime, and the ghoul, ghost, or specter will be sucked straight down to the fires of hell. 
You'll never be harassed by a mirror monster again. Find the new Frankenflusher anywhere paranormal products are sold. Now it's time to invite our guests. Josh, can you hear us through the phone lines? Yes, yes, you're coming through fine. Hello, Josh. Oh, fantastic. Hello, hello, both of you. Thank you for having me on tonight. Very good. Very good. Now, Josh, you're a medium that specializes in the dark side of Hollywood. Yes, that's that's correct. Um, and as uh, as Paul was uh, was talking about not revealing my full identity, that was something I had to learn the hard way uh, when I was uh, younger and newer in this uh, really cutthroat Hollywood world. Um, so I had to distance myself from from my past and really from just being exposed like that. Uh, it's um, it, it gets dangerous out there when you're uh, meddling in these things that uh, not everybody wants to hear about. It makes perfect sense. Josh, may, may I speculate about what may have happened to you as a young child? Because I was myself a young child. I know it's hard to believe, listener. But did it by chance involve a blood cult? Uh, a near miss with a blood cult, actually. I, I know it's mm-hmm. it's kind of everyone's story. Um, you're growing mm-hmm. up, uh, you hear some things, you, you want to learn more, and it usually leads to some form of uh, a blood pact or blood cult. Um, yes. But I, uh, I got out before it got to that, uh, but it left its scars, uh, mostly, like I said, on my identity, and I had to, uh, mm-hmm. had to step away from that and uh, do a bit of reinvention. Um, but, uh, but these occult matters, they, they had their hold on me, and I, I had to know more. Once you pull the curtain back a little bit, you, uh, you can't just look away. Josh, could you explain to our listeners tonight exactly what it is that you do as, as a medium to the deceased Hollywood stars? Uh, could you just go into that a little bit so people have a better understanding? Absolutely. Uh, so aside from my personal practice, um, I'm, I, I try to make time to, to sit and try to make contact, uh, just open myself as a, as a vessel or a, a conduit uh, you know, several times a day for a couple hours um, a, a session. Uh, so aside from that, the uh, consulting side of my life is really, it's a lot of uh, younger or newer um, actors, performers, uh, musicians in the Hollywood uh, industrial complex reaching out to me to try to contact their heroes, their uh, icons of old and and get some advice, some tips, solve some problems for them, workshops, sometimes even just get notes on a script that they might be uh, engaging with. Uh, So it, it really is just trying to create that bridge between that old wisdom, that ancient 1920s wisdom, and our current entertainment situation. It's fascinating. It is. It is fascinating. Um, I wanted to call it work, but it's really, it, it is my, my whole being. I agree. It is very fascinating. Uh, Josh, have you, is there, I don't know if you can speak on the subject, but for chance, do you have any... Uh, maybe some hot tips about what might be coming up in the future for Hollywood? Uh, one that's uh, resonated to me because I, I loved this show when I was, uh, when I was younger. Um, Ernest Borgnine, uh, mm. he, he apparently has been in some conversations through another uh, a young group of uh, writers and performers to relaunch Airwolf. Oh, so, so you recall, you recall then the Airwolf series. Yes, of course. Yeah, I, I thought it was very exciting. Um, so I'm, I'm quite excited for this. There's, there's no time frame on this. Uh, time gets a little difficult for the Departed. Uh, they don't engage with it the same way we do. But um, could be 2020, could be 2030. I, I imagine hmm. it won't have a much longer runway than that. So and and. Is there anything you can tell us in terms of you know, when when you speak with these departed stars? Uh, do they give you any plot details? Do you, do they give you any? You know, have they have they read the script or or how much do they know and how much do you know? <laughs> I see what you're doing, Paul, and I I'm sorry, but 
standard NDA rules still apply in, in my world here. I, may I had be, to try. I, I may be talking to uh, the, the other worldly presences that, that walk invisibly amongst us day after day, but I still have to respect their, um, their business privacy, you understand. I understand. I had to try. Paul, I commend you for trying. Why don't we take a few calls from our hot tip line for Dark Hollywood and see if there's anything perhaps for our guests or just in general that that we need to investigate or discuss. First call, go ahead. A second, I'll be right back with you to talk about the, uh, you know, the uh, ETs and whatnot. I think, actually, I think it just went through. Hello? Hello? Is this working? Hello. Damn it, I can't... I can't see. Just Go ahead, caller. The number on the phone, I can't really tell. It says, hello? This is working. It's supposed to be a voicemail thing. Yes, go ahead, caller. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know. Hello? Damn it. You're on Dark Hollywood. Go ahead, caller. Wow. Well... Paul, as you may know, this is a tip line. It's not a live caller situation. What's uh, that? Uh, that was just a tip. That was a message left. Uh, but what do you think about it? Seemed dark. Hmm. Uh, I, I think the caller is, uh, is obviously trying to reach out. It sounded to me like they had something that they wanted to, to discuss, and someone on the other end of the line was preventing them for, from doing so. And uh, that's the sort of thing that really you don't want to see uh, with, with the first call. That kind of puts my guard up, Mike. Uh, uh, Paul, I, uh, Paul and Josh, I'm sorry to, to butt in here about that. Uh, I'm getting, I, I've got a note here from uh, Alex in the recording booth here. He says uh, that was actually just me trying to test out the phone line. Oh. I guess. Oh. So how, I don't know how that got in there. I, I don't remember making the call. Perhaps I was blacked out in some sort of icker state, but mm, missing time, missing yes, time. Yes, Mike. Mm, yeah. Yes, I thought it sounded familiar, but I couldn't tell you where it was from. Well, why don't we take a, another call here? Alex has assured me that this will be a proper message for us. Hey man, this is. Um, I guess I'll go by piss. Masterson, um, I was just calling uh, because I just wanted to discuss or maybe ask some questions about the uh, celebrity list of, of C-list celebrities out there and the cult of drinking um, the piss of the young because, uh, you know, it's, it's been a lot of money to do it and um, it's really draining the resources we have already from all of the piss, you know, um, from the young that's already out there. And like, it's just like, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it seems to me like, like, you know, like a false flag operation. Like, you know, these people were reaching out to say like, we want your children's piss, you know? Mm hmm. Yeah. So uh, unfortunately, anyway, Mike, fan, thanks for having me oh. on. Yeah, unfortunately, Mike, the caller is, uh, in my estimation, completely correct. This is a new health craze that has been sweeping Hollywood. It is dark. It is dangerous. And uh, Josh, I don't know if you've heard about this or not, but uh, it, it is something that uh, I would encourage the young people uh, in California to stay far away from. Yeah, this is this is actually being sold initially or, or explained away as sort of a, uh, a poor man's um, penis facial. Uh, mm -hmm. it, so it, mm -hmm. it can be within the reach of the C-listers of the world, the people, the, uh, the more aspirational Hollywood um, Hollywood types. Uh, but there, there is a dark side here that that is not being presented up front for um, for these these poor, impressionable people. Uh, false flag, I think, is dead on uh, the connections to what's happening with our with our bee populations. Uh, I, that I believe the caller, uh, Mr. Masterson, was it alluded to? Uh, absolutely dead on. Thank you for the call, uh, Mr. Masterson. You know, you know, gentlemen, they say it's the the water of life, urine, but in this case, 
I think it's more like the water of death. I would agree with that, Michael. Yeah, well said. All right. Alex has another call for us. Uh, Here we go. This is Bill Golden from Oak Ridge. I just called to say Stevie Wonder can see. That's right. There's a theory that Stevie Wonder, the legendary blind singer-songwriter, is not actually blind. He's just been pretending for the last six decades. He frequently attends basketball games. He once caught a falling mic stand. He's interested in photography and once took a photo, and he does other things typically reserved for people who can see. I invite you to check out the video of him catching a mic stand when Paul McCartney runs past him. The question is, why would Stevie do this? Do his hit song titles hold the key? I present this question to you, gentlemen. Sign, sealed, (laughs) delivered. (laughs) <laughs> hmm interesting theory stevie wonder now now gentlemen i am not in hollywood so i don't know the stevie wonder but you two are both located in the dark recesses of tinsel town do you have any thoughts on whether or not stevie wonder is keeping us in the dark well jo- i was curious if josh had uh ever had the opportunity to make contact with stevie wonder from from beyond the grave josh uh, so once, once I, I was lucky enough, I, I'm actually a big fan of Stevie Wonder, so uh, I, I was seeking him out. Um, the way he told it, and I, I don't know if there's any medical doctors who can verify this, but he actually was born with a heightened sense of sight, and the glasses mm. helped to help him uh, cope with, uh, with what really is a... Is a a bright and painful world if you uh, if you were so acutely attuned to uh, all the wavelengths out there as he was and not just visual ones um that's where a lot of his uh seemingly preternatural abilities to you know catch mic stands that maybe he couldn't even see uh, mm-hmm. except out the corner mm-hmm. of his eye or um he, he was really a man burdened uh, it sounds like and um those glasses helped you know, so who who am I to begrudge someone a, a crutch to to deal with the world's uh, darkness? Mike, I just uh, looked up Stevie Wonder. I just did a search for Stevie Wonder on Wikipedia. Yes. Dot org, and it turns out he's actually still alive. So I really I'm not thought, sure. Am I thinking of Ray Charles? Then who who died? You like, might. Yeah, I think the caller may have been thinking of Ray Charles as well. I'm not sure. It's hard to say. Well, gentlemen, I think it might be time to move on to the beefy part, as I like to say jokingly in every episode. It's time to move on to the main subject of the night, the Stargate conspiracies. But first, friends, are you looking for a way to escape the orange tan trash fire that is America? Well, look no further with BMM Industries' new bored to death mining coffin. The next time a trumpeteer says something so racist and dumb that your head explodes into a million pieces, just open up the lid of the diamond-tipped titanium casket and climb on in. Once seated comfortably, simply shout, fuck this, and the bored to death mining coffin will start grinding its way straight to the Earth's core. That's right, you can choose magma over maga. And don't worry about giving up because climate change will wipe out the greedy bastards within 10 years anyway. Get the bored to death mining coffin at any funeral parlor in the states of Kentucky or West Virginia. And Mike, I have to tell you, I ordered three for my entire family, and they are an amazing product. They work exactly as advertised, and I would encourage all of our listeners to go to that website and uh, order one for yourself today. They are comfortable. What was that website again? The website is www.boredtodeathminingcoffin.xoxo.xxx.com. Again, that is www.boredtodeathminingcoffin.xoxo.xxx.com. Stargate, the 1994 Roland Emmerich blockbuster, starring MacGyver. Well, Richard uh, Richard Dean Anderson. Yes, yes. 
Now, uh, now R- Richard Dean Anderson uh, starred as the character in the series. Uh, in the film, however, that character was played by Kurt Russell. Oh, okay, who was who was Richard Dean Anderson in the first film? Then he was not in the first film. Wait, who is Richard Dean Anderson? He's the character. Oh, he's a character in Stargate, played by a MacGyver. Uh, Richard Dean Anderson is a character in the Stargate series that spun off from the film. Ah, oh, okay. He is the same character in the series that Kurt Russell is in the, in the and, movie. And he's played by who? I, that, jo- that, sounds, that sounds familiar to me. Yes. MacGyver stars in one of the Stargates. Now, gentlemen, I must admit, I don't know all that much. I've not seen the film, but I've heard about the secrets. I can say I have seen three episodes of what's called Stargate Atlantis. So I feel I might have an expertise on some of this. Paul, what's your background with the Stargate phenomenon? Well, Michael, you know, I've been out here in Hollywood doing my research on uh, what has come to be known as the Stargate conspiracy or the Stargate phenomenon. And I have to tell you, it is a dangerous situation out here. It is dark. It is mysterious. And quite quite frankly, it is flat frightening. Um, there is uh, recent evidence suggesting that the, the Stargate itself is not just a piece of Hollywood fiction, but does in fact exist here in the real world. And I know that that may be a little hard for our listeners to swallow, but the evidence, uh, it doesn't lie. And we're going to show you tonight that Hollywood is up to some dirty tricks when it comes to producing some of the most successful films ever made, including the Stargate. Now, Josh, as a Hollywood medium, uh, how many of the secrets have you unraveled from Stargate and the franchises thereof? Well, uh, Mike and Paul, uh, I was actually unaware of Stargate, uh, if you can believe it, uh, until 2008, when hmm. one of the one of the leading actors in the series uh, passed away, uh, Don oh. Don Davis, and he contacted me during one of my uh, personal sessions, and he had a lot to get off of his chest um, because he had been deep into this this dark, covered up world for mm-hmm. uh, the latter bulk of his career. Yes. And it's been a fascinating journey, my uh, my delving into this uh, this underbelly of the Stargate. Well, I, what I would love to do with you, Josh, is go into a little bit of my research and cross-check it with you and your contacts uh, on the other side of the undead realm, if you will, to see if the theories hold any water and are true or not. I would love that. This is a great idea. Listeners, we are going to have an experience you will never get to experience again or before. So first of all, I would love to take a moment and acknowledge the the hard work and risk of those those few people that have been involved with the production of the Stargate uh, films and, and television series in getting those clues out to us because this was a tight government-run operation. And yes. if not for a few people really sticking their necks out, we might not have the, the fleshed-out ideas we have today about the reality of the Stargate program. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. So I just want to acknowledge their risk and their sacrifice there. That is very good of you. So what is the Stargate? What really is the Stargate? So as a lot of the um, listeners who are fans of the TV show or the movie Stargate, 
uh, are probably aware. A stargate uh, is uh, a certain type of portal that, that can instantly transport uh, a person to different parts of the world or even, uh, believe it or not, different parts of the galaxy via what are called wormholes. And, and Josh, I believe we see this a lot on the various uh, TV shows and in the original film. Yeah, that, that, that is correct. And even beyond the confines of our galaxy, if, if you can believe that, uh, it just gets bigger and bigger. Um, there's some talk that it may actually be a portal to other universes. Uh, mm. there, there may be no end to how large uh, a, um, a radius this Stargate can operate. Well, and you know, that is um, troubling information, quite frankly, because the evidence that uh, has been coming out recently suggests that the Stargate is currently fully operational uh, in our real world. And Mike, I know you've been itching to get to this, so I'm going to just go uh, ahead and I, come I, out and say it. I'm pretty sure I know what you're going to say here, Paul. All right. Well, uh, the, <laughs> the evidence that we have here yes, yes, is... Yes, yes, yes. Would you shut up and let me say it? I'm just saying I think I know what you're going to say. Okay, well... The Stargate is a currently to located. Nibiru. Oh. The Shut up and let me say it. I'm listening to what you're saying. I'm just very excited. There is a real world Stargate located in the country of Iraq. Iraq. Yes. Yes. Let me say it. Thank you. The Sumerian civilization way mm -hmm, back in mm -hmm, mm -hmm. about 1500 BC were known this is this is factual history right here they were known to have worshiped an alien race that were called the Funaki okay and this Funaki a race of ancient alien beings mm, yes placed stargates here on earth in order to easily travel between our world and their world. Our listeners need to know the truth. They deserve to know the truth of what is happening out here in Los Angeles, California. You've heard it here, listener. Uh, I'm told we have a call in. Uh, so why don't we take one of those and see what the caller has to say? Hi, my question is for Josh. My name is Braden. I've always had a huge crush on Richard Dean Anderson. I'm sad that I never got to meet him before he died. So I was wondering if you could contact him for me and ask if he will meet me in the afterlife in heaven. Thank you. Hmm. So who who did we decide Richard Dean Anderson was? I'm sorry, caller. But Thank you, caller, for, for the call. Yes, but I am still a little confused. That's MacGyver? He was a character, I believe, I believe Josh mentioned that he was a character in the first series, but not the movie. Yes. Yes. That is, that is correct. Also known as MacGyver, um, for those who, who truly love him. Um, I get this request a lot. I, I have to just laugh a little because uh, this, is, this is one of my most common requests from from those who are not in the Hollywood world. It's really uh, fans who may have missed their chance uh, to meet their hero and, and they just want to want to get a message or, uh, or a rendezvous set up with, uh, with their beloved star, star from afar. Um, ah. But I, I, I try not to uh, try not to put that pressure on to my, uh, my contacts in the afterlife. It's, it's a lot to ask. Uh, of them and their time and their commitments. So uh, I, I do appreciate the call, um, but I, I couldn't do it. It would really jeopardize my standing with, um, with the departed. Now was Richard Dean Anderson, I don't, Josh, I don't know if you can speak to this or not, but was he, uh, I'm guessing maybe considered a bit of a heartthrob in his, in his heyday? Absolutely. Um, and all, all you have to do is look at that hair. Mm. Just look at that hair. A head of hair. 
it's magnificent. I'm a. Uh... I just looked him up, Mike. I wanted to mention. I I, I just looked him up on Wikipedia. dot org, and it's、uh, according to this. It says that、uh, Richard Dean Anderson is still alive. I don't know if they need to update their page or exactly what the situation is, but that's what we're interesting. That is the word on the street over here in Hollywood. Paul, you said you were looking on a website. What was that website again? It was www.baltimoreorioles. dot org. Thank you. Yes. Well, caller salary, we couldn't get you a afterlife hookup, but we have more things to discuss. Do you think George W. Bush was a fan of the movie, or more a fan of SG One? Yeah, I I do know a little bit about George W. Bush's involvement with it. He, I will say, was not completely、uh, aware of the scope of the program himself.、Uh, not a he, surprise. Yeah, well, he、um, he had to be the face of the government while、uh, while they were still、uh, working on these other operations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they they kept him in the dark enough so that he would not go rogue on his own or get overly concerned about、uh, really the high stakes that that were、uh, at play in this、uh, operation. I, I shouldn't say were at play; that are at play. This continues to be an issue. It continues to occur. Absolutely. So was he a fan of the show or the movie?、Uh, I I I believe he was、uh, too hard of a worker to really take in much、uh, entertainment. Honestly. You think he may have just felt these were all fiction, and he didn't himself necessarily understand that there was a Stargate in the town of Nasirah, Iraq. He absolutely knew that the Stargate was there. I、mm -hmm. would be, I would not be surprised if he was unaware that the film and television series existed as they did or were successful. He was put into play when. The deep state、uh, found it necessary to、uh, to deploy him in the public eye, but、um, but make no mistake, he he was a little more than a puppet in the Stargate operation.、Uh, he he did what his masters requested of him, including invading Iraq. Wow, this is the truth we're looking for. And you know, Mike,、um, we're talking about. The Bush administration a lot. We've been alluding to their interest in this matter.、Um, I wanted to touch on that a little bit to give our listeners sort of a sense of why、yes. they would be trying to do that. We need to we need to fast forward here to the、uh, the 1980s when Saddam Hussein was in control of Iraq. Eventually. According to CIA intelligence and、uh, various other sources, he was at that time able to get the Stargate working again, fully functional. Absolutely. That is the, as you mentioned, the real reason that President Bush made the decision to invade Iraq. The reasons that we were given, and I'm sure you know this quite well. No,、oh, I、or、do. Simply a diversion tactic or a cover-up, if you will, to hide the true reasons. Absolutely, we know this to be true because it has been corroborated by many sources, including Chelsea Manning when she leaked the Iraq war logs. There are at least four times references to Stargates, including the now infamous. Infamous time at location one eight five four D, where United States soldiers troops watched a man on a motorcycle escape through an Einstein Rosen bridge or Stargate. Fascinating stuff and and one hundred percent absolutely correct. correct. Absolutely one hundred percent correct. I I also want to、uh, want to point out that we talk about these stargates as being、uh, functional and and in practice, but the truth is is that nobody knows,、uh, especially not their keepers and the people working on them, exactly what they are capable of. It it seems every few years there are signs and indications that the、uh, functionality has been expanded upon. Uh, and again, it just opens up 
that that radius of operation and the uh, the capabilities of these devices, and who knows where it will end? Who knows how how large this um, this Stargate world will will become? Well, the you know the truly uh, frightening prospect about that, Josh and Mike, is that the Funaki, you know, they seemed to be friendlies, if you will, uh, friendly yes. to our ancient civilizations. But Josh is right. We have no idea if these Stargates are functional, what else could possibly come through. We don't know if other alien races, such as the Klingons, could emerge. There's just no way to tell, and it is dangerous and and potentially deadly that this is something that Hollywood is messing with without having enough real-world knowledge about it. Absolutely. In the three episodes of Stargate Atlantis that I have seen, there were evil creatures, wraiths they were called, beings that had problems with the humans. And I think that may have also been just a warning of what lays on the other side, potentially, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. of the story. Now, is this, is this, uh, a di this is a different program from SG-1, is that correct? I believe so. Josh, how, do you know how many Stargate uh, movies or, or, or series there, there were total? I believe there were three series totaling um, about 17 seasons, as well as three additional wow. films to the original uh, wow. Roland Emmerich one. It is, wow. uh, it, it is a deep well, especially since these experiments are ongoing with uh, the U.S. government and potentially other governments around the world. Uh, so I have no reason to believe that uh, we won't be hearing more from, uh, from the Stargate, uh, quote, fiction, uh, fictional universe end quote uh, that we have already you've heard it first listeners this is the kind of truth and information that we are getting from our sources the number of seasons that stargate had wow i never thought i would ever learn that truth okay gentlemen uh we have another call on the hot tip line so why don't we go ahead and listen in and see what this truth seeker has to say for us. Go ahead, caller. Hey guys, this is Jay. Uh, just wanted to say, uh, Mike, Paul, you guys are doing a great job with these uh, dark Hollywood episodes. Paul, I'm glad you're back for good now. Um, but hey, I just had a, a quick question. I, I just wanted to know how the filmmaker got so much truth into the movie. There's just so much that, that they, he sheds a light on. How did you get so much truth in there. I'd love to know. I'd love to know your thoughts. I'm working on a screenplay myself. I'd like it to be very truthful, so I thought uh, maybe you guys could help out. Well, that listener, as you may know, was Jason Hulls, a member of the B-Movie Maniacs, but not necessarily on the inside of Dark Hollywood. I, I, would, uh, I would counter question the caller and say, uh, how did he... How did he get so much fiction in, in what is yes. really a very truthful film? Yes. Uh, th this film was made with absolute oversight from the very people responsible for the actual yes. Stargate program. Uh, there's no way it could have been made without that input. It, it was so locked down. I, I, I have to uh, disagree with Jay's assertion that I'm back uh, for the podcast. I'm, I'm here and I'm happy to be a co-host on Dark Hollywood, but I don't want um, any B-movie maniacs to get the wrong impression that I am coming back to the podcast full-time. As you know, Mike, I'm out here doing um, important work that takes up a lot of my time, and, and this is my yes. primary focus, making sure that the, um, the fans of the cinema understand what's happening out here in Hollywood. Yes, and we commend you, Paul, for the, the hard and dangerous work you were doing. Thank you. Uh, if, if I could address his call, though, Mike. Yes. Um, you know, it's interesting that uh, Jay mentions this because one of the things that I've spent the last four, four and a half years out here in Hollywood doing is trying to 
uncover the connections between the films that so many people love, such as Stargate, and the real life connections of how these films came to be. And of course, I'm talking about um, the Stargate in Iraq and what happened in the early part of the 20th century. I don't know if you're aware of this or not. It was at one point under the rule of Nazi Germany. Wow. And uh, they were doing some archaeological digs when they actually uncovered the Stargate for the first time in a very long time. It was laying dormant. Wow. Yes. And inside, Mike, I know know you are, uh, you've done your homework about this. Josh, perhaps you have as well. But inside they found the great ziggurat. Yes. And that is a huge pyramid in Iraq. The discovery was actually made by a German archaeologist by the name of Ernest Hertzfeld. And Mr. Hertzfeld made this made this discovery which set the events of the Stargate franchise in motion. Is it possible that a young Roland Emmerich, perhaps as a child even, living in Germany, was able to contact Ernest Hertzfeld or personally knew Ernest Hertzfeld and that created the seed, gave him the idea for the first Stargate film. We simply don't know. Uh, We don't have enough information available, but we just don't know whether or not that meeting, that conversation ever actually happened. Absolutely. You're you're absolutely right, Paul, and we don't know uh, what contact they may or may not have had, but we do know there was some spark that sent uh, Roland Emmerich looking for uh, something like a Stargate because his involvement in the film was no accident. Uh, When the U.S. government made it clear that they needed some sort of pop culture cover um, to distract Mm -hmm. from Mm -hmm. the actual operations, they tapped him so he had already made some waves before the film was even written Mm -hmm. unbelievable unbelievable and mike i think you'll agree that it's important that our listeners right now understand that when they go to their local blockbuster to rent a film that they have an understanding of where some of these films are coming from because it is um often thought to be a place of joy out here in Hollywood, a place where dreams are made. But the reality of the situation is that it is dark. Yes. It is dangerous. And I think people need to understand that they need to think twice before they watch some of this material that the Hollywood elite are putting out there into the general population. We know the Stargate is a real device, not just because of the Bush administration or Saddam Hussein discovering it in the great ziggurat of Ur, Mm -hmm. but we know because Albert Einstein, one of the greatest modern minds we know of, who is still catching up to the Funaki's technology and knowledge, but still a brilliant man of his time, theorized the Einstein-Rosen bridge that is the connection between two different points in space-time, which, according to him, the smartest man that has ever lived in the past 100 years, it is a fact and a reality. And I, I, I just want to point out that we are, we are talking about Stargate in the singular, but um, as, as Paul alluded to, there are multiple Stargates currently in use on this planet. And each one presents uh, a danger larger than anything else we could be talking about today. Absolutely. I think we have time for one more call before we say goodnight, dear listener. So let's patch that through and see what this new hot tip from the dark Hollywood underbelly has for us. Hello. Uh, I heard that you were looking for an Einstein Rosenbridge. My name is Einstein Rosen, 
and I am the Long Island Bridge champion for years running. Myself and the lovely Ethel Dershowitz, we have won the Long Island Invitational for Bridge the last four years. We're second runners up the two years before that. I heard your ad on the radio. I figured I would call in because, you know, I've got some free time on my hands. I had thought that perhaps I would talk to somebody, but uh, it's not. Uh, I am free on Fridays, generally after 2 p.m., but before sundown. I am also free on Sundays if you are looking to talk to me. That is also Ethel and I get together to practice our strategy. So if you have a partner, I would be more than happy to host you in my lovely home. Again, my name is Einstein Rosen, and looking forward to your correspondence. All right, bye-bye now. Wow. Wow, yeah. Wow. A real Einstein Rosen. And I, and I think the first question we need to ask ourselves is uh, what's hidden in that message? Well, exactly, Josh. You know, that that's that's what's so disheartening and frankly sad about this whole Hollywood situation is that a lot of people who watch these films and find out about things like the Einstein Rosen Bridge don't understand the danger of it. They want to participate. They're inviting dangerous people into their homes without realizing it. And I think it's a really unfortunate uh, side effect of some of these Hollywood films. Absolutely. It's important to know that there are others out there. There are people like us and people like you who want to find the truth, who demand the truth. And we will find the truth. We will dig up the truth from its grave and we will bring it back to life. So everyone will see this truth is the actual truth. I'd like to thank our guest, Josh, for coming on the program and sharing his truth and the truth he knows with us and the listener. Thank you, Josh. Thank you both very much for having me. This was uh, this was a real hoot. Josh, do you have a last name? I, I really would uh, rather not. Oh, that's right, right. We covered that. My apologies. Yeah, that, that's fine. I, I get asked that a lot, if you can believe it. <laughs> Paul, you are always searching for the truth, even if you have to look twice. And that's why we love you. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate it. And I appreciate all of your work that you have been doing and continue to do to expose the truth to the masses. Everyone listening right now, I'm sure, appreciates it very much. Well, (laughs) thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It is a pleasure and an honor to search for the truth with all of you. Listener, just keep in mind as we tune out the radio dials tonight, remember to take that flashlight of your brain and put in some extra strong batteries and shine it down the throat of the darkest, darkest recesses of Hollywood. Because there is where you will find the truth. I have been Michael Hayes. Thank you, and good night.